Steve, as always, it's a great pleasure to spend a quiet moment with you. We don't get them terribly often. I think about you in terms of motor racing, engineering expertise, wisdom. You've been around at a very high level in this game for a long time. And then your career path intersects with this wild Kiwi stallion called Shane Van Gisbergen. And you've got to go through the process you've been before to bring him back under control. What's that journey been like so far? Well, uh, in the year and a half, in round figures, uh, that I've been working with Shane, or I prefer to say Shane and I have been working together at, at Techno, uh, it's, it's been great getting to know him. Uh, and to be honest, I haven't had to do much. It's really about creating an environment in which both the team and the driver and the sponsors and what have you get everything out of it and everything just gets better together. Um, Shane is a prodigious talent. Um, he is motor racing through and through. That's, he lives to drive racing cars. And it's not hard when you've got someone that enthusiastic and that keen to get into the car. I think it's worth taking a pause for a moment to just stop and reflect on your story because it never gets old for me. I love discussing this with you. The teams that you've worked with, the drivers that you've engineered and worked alongside, it reads like a who's who of international motorsport on both sides of the Atlantic and now in the Pacific as well. Just run through some of it for us. Oh. <laughs> and I know that it's somewhat embarrassing for me to drag you into that conversation again, but it's an interesting one. Yeah, well, um, I've, I've been fortunate. Um, my, my first charge, if you like, was Nigel Mansell. And uh, the pressure of working with an up and coming British driver who was obviously going to be good um, was, was, was quite an interesting challenge in your first year as, uh, in Formula One. Uh, I worked with Nigel for three years. Uh, he left to go to Williams and on to, to great things with Williams and Ferrari and then back to Williams. And um, I was given the task then of looking after Ayrton Senna. And Ayrton and I got to know one another very well over his entire career. I race engineered him for three years. He then left for, to go to McLaren. Um, I joined McLaren some two or three years later uh, and worked with him again for three years. I wasn't engineering him directly, but the, the bond and the respect was, was still there. And McLaren was a, a, a very uh, well-organized environment for drivers and engineers. There was, it was not factionalized in any way. It was very integrated. And so whatever you were doing was a direct contribution, whether it took be to Gerhardt's car or to Ayrton's car or whatever. Uh, and then it goes on. I mean, uh, the la you know, uh, even, uh, I say even, they're all great drivers. Uh, Mika, uh, his two world championship years. Hakkinen. Yeah, Mika Hakkinen. <laughs> Uh, and then followed by Kimi Raikkonen. Um, the five years with Kimi were awesome. I mean, Kimi is still what I think is the yardstick for a model racing driver. One of the reasons why I've stepped you down this street again is it leads me back to Shane Van Gisbergen. And it's impossible to put drivers in a nice little totem pole order, I understand that. Where does someone like Shane sit in terms of speed, aptitude, engineering, understanding, ability to pass? Well, I, th I think he shares, uh, a, of the drivers that I've listed, uh, I think he shares a lot of traits with them. Uh, I'm very cautious about making comparisons between drivers because they are individuals by definition. But I think if you, if you take a sort of view from 30,000 feet or whatever and say, what are the traits of a racing driver that, that every good racing driver needs? Uh, they've got to be quick. Um, they've got to be disciplined, they've got to listen, they've got to share, they've got to contribute. And one of the most important things, and, and all of the drivers that I've, I've mentioned do this, they don't carry yesterday into today. You've already seen some great performances with your guys and your group. You've gone to a couple of tough tracks along the way, and I see you in particular and your guys just making sure that the bottom of the curve doesn't fall too far, grabbing points, thinking about what it means later on. And if we recall the back end of last year, you fellas were extremely powerful. I sense you doing it again to try and go another step. Any motor racing championship is won over the course of a year. It's a campaign. It's like a military campaign. It's not a single battle. It doesn't depend on today's race. Um, 
it, it's about a steady accrual of points. And I know people may think, oh, that's dull, but it's about positioning yourself to win when you can and finish as high up as, as possible when you can't win. And we're in the accrual stage. We're just staying in contention, making sure we've got the points on the board, because once you've got them, they can't take them away. Uh, and then being ready for when you can push and when you really do need to, to deliver, you're able to deliver. As always, very much enjoy sharing a quiet moment with you, Steve. Thank you for your time. Best wishes for the balance of the season. Thank you. We're looking forward to it.